Hi YouTube, I thought I would do a quick video about wood engraving. Um, obviously this is a really old printing technique um, using this type of wood here which is called boxwood um, specifically end grain boxwood because it's really smooth um, it doesn't have any holes in it at all so you can see this is a very typical small piece um, it's sort of rough on one side but smooth and ready to use on the other side um, and the grain is so fine on this that it is it just feels like um, almost like flat plastic or something like that it's very smooth um, another thing I thought you could use are these things called um, tagua nuts here's one in its kind of natural state is what they look like when you first buy them um, and then you can sand them all down like this and you get this really kind of smooth effect again it's just um it's woody but it's very very smooth and it feels almost like plastic um so i took a piece of this and i filed it right down i actually put it on a belt sander and you can see these very flat surfaces you could get so i reckon you could use it in exactly the same way um as with the boxwood but i haven't actually tried it before i just thought i would mention that it might be a, a useful kind of cheaper alternative um, okay, here's a couple that I did earlier using boxwood. Um, here's an iguana. You may not be able to see the detail particularly well on this video, but what I'll do is I'll um, take some photos as we go along so you can see it a bit more clearly. Um, this iguana took me quite a long time. It's got a lot of um, fine detail on it. And uh, the other one that I've done is a tortoise, which I'll show you in a second as well. So yeah, I've cut out all the scales and things. Um, the technique with this, you can either do it like I've done these, um, or you can do a lot of kind of hatching and cross hatching. Here's the little tortoise. Again, you can see I've cut out fairly big chunks here and there, um, and then added finer detail into it. But yeah, each one of these took me um, quite a few hours, I think, probably seven or eight hours each something like that so they're not it's not a quick process by any means um, and I haven't refined these yet either like the edges haven't been done right so then you have this big uh, leather thing I think it's full of sand or something this is very heavy um, and then you have the tools so these are engraving tools and they basically just give you different line thicknesses so some of, some of them are dead straight like this one um, and then, like I say, the, the tips of them um, vary. This one is slightly curved. Um, the curved ones are quite useful because as you're using them, you can kind of do like a little kind of a flick with them. Um, it all takes practice. And one of the scariest things, obviously, is when you're doing the lines with these tools, if you slip, you can um, basically just put a, a score line right the way through something that you've been adding a lot of detail to so it is quite unforgiving this process um, these ones that you're seeing here are kind of square in cross section um, and they give you a different kind of line okay then you take your piece of boxwood and you place it in the middle of your leather support and you can use this um, you can really kind of push down into it um, and then you take your tool and what I do is um, I use my middle finger to kind of support on the wood and then I use my index finger to kind of do the pushing um, and the idea here is either yeah you do hatching you could do lots of lines that are really close together um, you could do cross hatching as well or you can do the technique that I did where I was kind of taking more out this is a roller and it's a nice flat one and that's going to be for applying the ink later on and this is the ink here, it's very sticky, um, it's kind of like a sort of tar, it's called letterpress ink um, and it gets everywhere, you get in a real mess with this stuff. Um, I've had mine for years, it's got a sort of a, a layer on the top, I can't remember if it had like a layer of paper or something over it, but um, that's gone quite hard, so it takes quite a bit of breaking through to get to the sticky ink before you can actually use it. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to move all this stuff out of the way first. 
and then I'll show you uh, how we go about doing the whole process. Okay, I'm just going to use a sheet of greaseproof paper for this video. Um, ideally, in the past I've used a piece of glass um, and because the glass is dead flat, you can put the ink onto the glass and you'll probably get a better result. Um, but just to give you the rough idea, I'm just going to show you it on this um, greaseproof paper. You can see here, look, I'm really struggling to get into the um, actual layer where the ink is. <laughs> and look how sticky it is. Ooh, it does, it gets everywhere. So there you go, you can see it really is like tar. And I just use a knife and just scoop some as if you're scooping up some marmite or something. And then I just put a, and it is the same sort of consistency as marmite. And I just do like a sort of a, a stripe across the um, greaseproof paper. Okay, and then what you do is get the roller and you've got to try and get it as like a sort of smooth layer so you can see that obviously when you first roll it it just makes a couple of stripes but the more you keep rolling the smoother it gets and what you're after is like a solid black um, kind of uh, band across the paper and yeah you want this to be kind of as free of any kind of holes or anything as possible and as solid black as you can get it basically. Obviously the main aim here is just to get a really flat even coating of ink on the roller and because the ink is so sticky it does take quite a bit of rolling backwards and forwards to get it on there. Okay here I am putting it onto the um, engraving and you're trying to put this on nice and smoothly as well which is not as easy as you think trying to get it on without um, getting the black into all the little holes and things. Here you can see <laughs> the greaseproof paper is not ideal. You can see it all sort of getting rolled and stuck to the roller there. Okay, so an ideal thing to have here would be a small printing press, um, but I don't have one of those. That is something that I look out for at car boot sales and things, and maybe one day I will own one, but for now I do it all by hand which I mean it's not ideal simply because every time you do this you get a different result um, and there's a lot of luck involved so here you can see I'm just using a flat surface like another bit of boxwood um, to press down um, you can also use your finger like I'm doing here that works quite well Sometimes I turn my finger upside down and I use my nail instead. You'll see me doing that later. Um, but it's whatever works. And you've got to try and keep the paper still, obviously. You don't want it to kind of go to one side, otherwise you get a smudge effect. Here, you can see then this first one was really quite bad. Uh, hardly any came out. Look, you can see there's a lot of gaps. So then I move on to the second attempt. It was obvious that I was going to need quite a bit more ink so you can see here I applied quite a lot more this time and then pressed down a bit harder and then I actually used the end of one of these tools just to help me push down more. You can see that I pushed this down quite a lot and then um, this is the effect that I got for this second one. So better than the first one, you can see like the spikes on the top of the iguana have come out a bit more. But there's still a few light kind of streaks where I didn't rub. Probably if I'd have spent a bit more time rubbing with that tool, that might have been like a perfect one really. But um, here I obviously added more ink and went for it quite a bit more. And you'll see this one actually comes out really quite dark. Now you might like this effect. And it, it does it does look good, but you lose quite a lot of the um, detail on it. It's more of a kind of a silhouette almost. <laughs> so um, I tried it again. This time I, I didn't roller it, I just went straight on. And this one actually, uh, although it's lighter, look, you see loads of the detail that I made um, on the original engraving. So 
this is the one that I was kind of most pleased with, with the iguana. Right, then I go on to do the tortoise. Um, this is an Indian star tortoise, by the way. That's why it's got those lovely kind of star patterns on the shell. Um, and I end up doing this one lots of times because, um, well, you'll see they all have uh, imperfections. So this first one's got a big hole missing from the back of the shell. There you go, you can see the hole. And also a lot of the detail hasn't come out on it. So I go on and do another one. Um, I could have just kind of, you know, waited and just showed you the one that worked. But I thought it would be good for you all to see, you know, just how annoying this process can be um, by showing you all the failures <laughs> as well. Um, so again, on this one, uh, it's even blacker than the first one. So a lot of the detail doesn't show through again. Um, and there's still a light patch on the back of the shell there that's been missed. So, try again. Again, I like using that, um, the end of one of the tools, just to help me push down. Incidentally, ignore all the kind of black around the edges of these. Um, obviously, I realised that they're not ideal. And what I'll do at some point is carve away those outside bits. But this is just um, to show you the actual tortoise. So just um, ignore the outside edge bits. It's just the, the detail of the tortoise that I was kind of interested in trying to get right. So this one is a bit better, but the back leg... Um, you can see there's no detail on the back leg, that's just all solid black, so I wasn't happy with that one. Um, at this point, I used a baby wipe to wipe down the wood engraving and then a bit of kitchen paper to dry it all off afterwards. Obviously that's important, otherwise the ink will get down into all of the gaps and you'll just end up with a big black rectangle. <laughs> okay, trying again. Okay, so the head of this one is pretty light, some of it's missing, and then some of the detail on the legs don't show up again, so I wasn't pleased with this one either. This next one starts to get a bit better actually, um, much more of the detail starts to show, so I'm a bit happy with this one, still a bit of head missing, but yeah, much more of the detail showing through. Then I add more ink again, and obviously every time you add more ink, it can be problematic because you can end up putting too much ink on, and then it can be too black and not show up any detail. And this one, I think it is too dark, really, but um, but it's nice. It's sort of nice in the way that that iguana one was nice, that was a dark one. Um, it shows up. It's quite bold. You just lose a bit of the detail. So I redid it um, where I didn't roll her onto it again. I just um, pressed again. And this one, I think, is the one that ends up being the best because it shows the detail the most. Um, ignore the stuff that's around the edge again. Just look at the actual tortoise and you'll see this is the best one. You're seeing the most detail. OK, I hope this has given you some idea of um, the process of wood engraving. Thanks for watching, hit subscribe to see more of my art videos in the future and I'll catch you in the next video.